Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. This is the regular meeting of the Downers Grove Grade School District 58 Board of Education meeting here on Monday, August 14th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Downers Grove Village Hall. This meeting is being live streamed for the public on the Village of Downers Grove's YouTube channel. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Joshi. Here. Member Ellis is absent. Member Hannes. Here. Member Harris. Here. Member Olchik is absent. Member Weiner. Here. Member Hughes. Here. Tonight, members of the audience will have an opportunity to provide a public comment to the board later on in the agenda. The board has does ask everyone wishing to make a comment to please fill out a card and uh, indicate the topic to be addressed. These can be placed at the basket over there on my, the table over there to my right. I have allotted 30 minutes tonight for public comment. All right, we're going to start out this meeting as we always do with the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's get back. All right, we're going to go immediately into our non-action reports. First up is on tonight's agenda are listed uh, eight communications received by the board. Are there any additional communications a board member would like to share at this time? Okay. That brings us up to our spotlight tonight. So we'd like to welcome our owner's representatives to provide a referendum update. Hi, Jordan. Welcome. Okay, perfect. Use the button. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Good evening. Can you see me, hear me all right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, my name is Jordan Schultz. Our firm is Huffman Keel, and we've been hired as the owner's representative for the referendum projects. So pleased to be here this evening. And again, this will be a fairly lightweight presentation just because we're fairly early in the project, uh, thick in design, but early in the overall grand scheme of things. But we want to have a working familiarity with you as we do with each of the boards that we work with over the course of time. Just we know each other then when there's big changes later or small changes, but that there's a working familiarity uh, both for our relationship, but also with your relationship with the greater community. Um, as well as staff and, and such. So um, with that being said, I'm um, going to hit forward. So real quick high level, again, big picture. We're in the thick of design. Uh, White is here this evening, Amy from White and Company. And, um, and so we're, we're thick in the, in the midst of navigating uh, design for the first set of schools, two middle schools and the four elementaries. Um, a lot of coordination, a lot of time with Kevin, with Jeff, and uh, Dr. Russell and the other staff to, uh, to design the buildings uh, with, their, with their updates. And then in each subsequent phase of the design, there are check marks uh, in terms of budgeting and, it's and ensuring that there's alignment with, uh, with the, the budget that was passed. Uh, one of the current items that we're working on is the solar RFP. Again, what can we accomplish in terms of solar? Uh, and, and installing PV systems on the existing, on the existing roofs uh, here forward. Are they large systems, small systems? It's something that's forthcoming, and it's an RFP request for proposal that we're working on. Uh, item two, in terms of existing conditions, again, we're working with existing schools, and so I'm sure as White has conveyed over time, there's a lot of things that you have to deal with in terms of what does it look like above ceiling? What does it look like behind walls? What are the existing systems in terms of structure, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, et cetera, that we have to interface with? Uh, part of this as well is environmental, right? So getting in there with the contractor to ensure that uh, there is proper coordination for disposable, disposal of hazardous materials when that time comes. Item number three, as I mentioned previously with regard to design, is bidding. So at uh, each of the junctures when drawings are finished, we then have to bid, a, bid the drawings out, and that's Bully and Andrew's task. Uh, currently, we have an early set of bidding that is, going, that is underway right now and those bids are due later this month. And that really has to do with the long lead times. I think probably as you know with, uh, ever since COVID, we've had a really large struggle with long lead times, mostly electrical mechanical equipment, but those two pieces of scope are huge for being able to open the first set of schools in 12 months. Uh, number four is AHJ, so authorities having jurisdiction. So that includes ISBE, that includes the village, et cetera, and just ensuring that we have alignment with approvals at the appropriate time because each, each of those things don't happen in a day. And so White is preparing to submit later this month for uh, ISBE, and then we'll have, a, with regard to the village, we'll have an appro approvals process that begins with a kickoff with uh, the neighborhoods for the middle schools. Uh, the elementary schools don't require that just because we're not doing additions there. But for the middle schools, it'll be a, a neighborhood meeting kickoff 
followed by planning and zoning review and commission, et cetera. Uh, and then fifthly, the owner direct items. So there's a number of different vendors that will continue to be involved. And so a couple of those right off the top. Um, commissioning is one that's on the agenda for this evening that is basically a firm that reviews uh, the design team's work to ensure that there's a, a sort of peer level review of the design as well as later in the project ensuring that when the systems are installed, specifically again the mechanical being a large focus and somewhat the electrical, um, when the systems are installed you're getting the most bang for your buck. And so that way, that way when students and staff are enjoying air conditioning in the schools, etc., we know that it won't last for uh, one year, but it'll last for 20, 30 years, and there's a longevity to it. A couple others that are under coordination for owner direct uh, technology, again, safety and, um, and security, along with move management. Again, it feels like move day is gonna happen in a very, very long time, but it will come sooner than we know it, and we need to plan those phases ahead of time, along with the furniture. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of these different line items, but this is meant to give a sort of overview of what does it look like for the next eight months. And so as we wrap up the this, this latter half of the year, um, what are the tasks that are before us? Again, mostly covered on the previous slide, but this gives you a good overview for, uh, for what's ahead. Um, really no other highlights on this one other than the fact that at certain junctures here, when bids come in, we'll be back to seek approval and, and we're still figuring out what that process looks like and how that gets presented to you. Jordan, what does MEP mean? I'm sorry, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Thank you. Yeah, and usually coupled with that is FP. So MEP, FP, uh, fire protection is the FP. Yeah. There's, there's all sorts of vernacular in, in the industry, of course, so please uh, stop me if there's <laughs> any questions. Uh, lastly, again, nothing really to present on the budget other than the fact that we're on track. Hard, hard to be off track when we're so early in the project, but um, hey, we'll pat ourselves on the back, right? Um, but our goal is to really make sure that, again, we're getting alignment, that we're, we're raising issues as they arise. Something strange happens on the project, change orders come. We want to be able to have, again, this kind of working relationship to say, hey, this thing arose on such and such a project, here's the change or amount in the future, or hey, we need to buy more furniture for such and such school. And so as these budget items arise, we'll continue to track these. And so we basically take every single invoice from now till the very end, and we log it in the master project budget, which then gets inputted into this budget summary. And so that goes from the design team to the abatement team to Bully and Andrews, I mean, literally everything soup to nuts. And so there's a lot of things that get um, populated into the spreadsheet that, that backs this up. And we'll review the detail sort of with the core team and then this higher level one at the, at the board level. That's it for this evening that I've got. Um, again, happy to open up to any questions that you may or may not have, or that you may have. Sure, any questions uh, from the board? This last slide, will we be seeing this as the project continues, or? Yep, yeah, the plan is this, to see this level, and then again, if, if there's a higher, a deeper level, there's sort of three layers. There's the invoicing level, there's the sort of trade by trade level, so, you know, White and Company, Bully and Andrews, the move manager, the technology, the, furniture and so that level is sort of the mid-level and then this is the high level sort of board one snapshot what percent complete are we on construction what percent complete are we on um, the design I'm looking at percent complete and helpful to get engaged but about the project based on the percentages there but I'm looking at I'm assuming that the percent complete is invoice over projected cost or is it percent as in like the project uh, duration or the project progress well yeah correct which it's one the former. so it's it's just the invoice percentage okay. so um, usually what will happen to your point is during construction it's a lag right so construction next summer will be spending anywhere from 15 to 20 million dollars a month um, but you won't get that invoice till the month is done so by the time we we hit it it's really a lag a, a month lag okay. yeah Could you speak to the uh, village and neighborhood meetings? Uh, what is the neighborhood specifically part of it? It looks like that's going to be completing in the next month or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you understand what those spaces look like? Yeah, so there were some initial meetings uh, just with the village, no neighborhood involvement yet. And right now, what we're working on is it'll probably be early to late September. Um, I would say the second to third week of September at this point. Uh, in terms of two neighborhood meetings, one for each, one for O'Neill and one for Herrick. Uh, and after those, then we'll be able to get on the agenda for uh, planning and zoning. 
Uh, and those will literally be just, uh, you know, put notice out, have a Q&A. The design team will probably put together some boards in terms of um, explaining what the project looks like, ask questions, maybe have some refreshments sort of thing. But just get comfor people comfortable with, hey, here's new bus circulation. Hey, here's where this edition is going and when. Here's when this, where this edition is going and when and how the site changes. Um, and that way, people in the neighborhood get comfortable with it and you don't show up to planning and zoning and get, ah. So. <laughs> Like traffic flow is going to be part of that. Traffic yeah. flow, yep, yeah, bus oh. circulation, traffic flow, and so again, it's hard to gauge ahead of time. You know, the the level of love for the project in in the neighbors in the neighborhood until you show up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, someone out their back door might say, "Hey, I used to have all these buses coming. I'm so happy you're you're changing bus circulation to this side, or, or whatever the case might be." Others might have the opposite opinion, and so we just want to get ahead of that. And, you know, the nice thing that we've been able to do with all of our community meetings is we've heard from the residents, you know, ahead of time, especially at Herrick, regarding traffic. And so one example of that is by designing the traffic um, with the new loop to the east end of the school coming out on Saratoga versus coming out on Linscott. Um, we, we certainly heard from the residents that if we could try and keep it out of the neighborhood and not create the same situation on Linscott like we have on mid -off. So we have taken into some of that consideration, but we'll definitely hear more feedback at the community meetings yeah. as well. Since you're here, and I don't know if you want to have Kevin speak to this, or if you speak to that, or, or you, um, I think I think it might be a little bit beneficial just to sort of reassure the community, and I think the, the board exactly. Um, you're a critical linchpin in making sure that we're truly represented and making sure, like, really looking out for us, uh, even when we run smaller construction projects here. Like it's. It's hard, They're, you know. This team here is running is running a district, so I don't know if one of you can really kind of speak to exactly how this relationship uh, kind of looks, you know, over the next couple of years on a weekly, monthly, daily basis. You know, like kind of the relationship that you guys are going to have and, and making sure that we're staying co cohesive. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, why don't you go ahead, Jordan, and explain it, and then I'll fill in any gaps that I have. Yeah, yeah. and I'll 100% I'll uh, defer to Dr. Russell. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, uh, again, as things begin, there's a lot of input required from, um, from Kevin and Jeff and, and a lot of the staff. Um, and we're sort of offering expertise within the uh, confines of the project from our experience in working with a number of different school districts over the years. On a monthly basis, in our, our relationship, if there's room on the agenda, we want to be here each month, basically. Uh, and again, we 100% defer to the larger team here uh, and to Dr. Russell, but if there's room on the agenda, we want to be here, even if it's a 10-minute update like this, because we know that there will be longer updates forthcoming. Um, and as it pertains to the neighborhood or relating with the village, again, White's been carrying the torch tremendously, um, along with the you know, uh, Kevin and his staff. And so again, we're, our, our goal is to really, it's, it's hand in glove where, where we operate as part of the team, integral to the school district staff. Um, and so that as we get familiar with the neighbors, you know, with the YMCA or whomever, right, with the village, um, that there's a, a friendly working familiarity that when there's pushback on certain things that we're able to be a friendly face that sort of is um, firm and fair, if you will, in those relationships. Does that help? It does, I, and I, I, I don't know if this question is for you, Kevin, or for you, yeah. is, you know, one of the things I know that we talked about here was sort of looking out for, you know, working with our maintenance teams and making sure that there were things that we were looking out for, people that knew and really understood our buildings. Is, are they coordinating uh, yeah. with, with your team? Is that, is that yeah. who kind so of is representing that? those kind of concerns you know like. from a high level I, I i think we've got a really good system we've got our architectural firm white and company that's been a partner with the district for for decades right. and, and of course they're looking out for our best interests and, and they're focusing primarily on the design and making sure that things get in on time and tying all the loose ends up from uh, the things that aren't in their scope helping us with landscape you know th those kinds of things we have bully and andrews who's really looking out um for the construction of, of the facility, making sure that that all gets done on time. And then our owner's representative um, helps work, and in, in they help both groups kind of come together to make the best decisions um, for us. And so, you know, when I was building my house, I, I wish I had somebody who could advise me, you know, before you make this decision, here are some things that you need to think of, or here's how we've seen it done. And that's really where uh, Huffman and Keel can come in, along with our architects and our, and our um, construction management firm, and, and advise us, uh, 
you know, this is what we're seeing um, as a success in other districts. You might want to consider this. If you truly want to save money on energy, you can do this. Like, so they offer us a bunch of options and expertise because so many of us, including myself, aren't trained in construction. Uh, so it, it is very helpful. So I like to think we've got the, the best of, um, you know, all three worlds here with our architect, with the construction management firm and then our owner's representative. But certainly Huffington and Kiel's role is to be our voice to look out for our best interests uh, and um, to make sure that we make the, the best decisions and get all the information uh, that we need. But I also want to remind people, White and Company is doing the same thing and so are bullying managers. They just have different lenses as we go through the project. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, getting into the weeds, it's, it's uh, again, I, I paused on commissioning just because that's sort of pressing for us right now. It's, it's things like that where it's like, hey, who are the firms out there that, you, that we should consider working with as a commissioning agent? Okay, we put this you know, RFP together, we kind of run the process, do the analysis, and at the end of the day, we, we defer to Kevin and say, hey, what do you think? You know, here's our recommendation uh, on who we, we would propose going with and how we've kind of talked about how many meetings they're gonna attend and what that looks like on the front end, what it looks like on the back end, uh, weighing out the cost and the time that they put into this response. What do you think? And then we make a rec recommendation from there. Fantastic. So. You know, things like that. Remember, Doshi, did you have more? I kind of jumped in while you were talking. So. How and, dare you? Go I know. Anybody else? Question? Oh, thank you. We really appreciate you being here tonight. Thank yeah, you. Thanks absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Jordan. Jordan. Pleasure. Do I do anything with this? All right, that brings us to reports to the board. The first one up is the superintendent's report with Dr. Russell. We have a lighter agenda today, but the superintendent's report is, is going to be a little bit longer just because of all the construction projects that I want to uh, update the community on that don't have anything to do with the referendum. <laughs> so uh, there are a few updates that I want to give, but it's hard to believe. You know, school is starting almost a week from today. Uh, we're going to have kiddos coming back next Wednesday. Our full staff returns a week from today. And our new teachers uh, were here today, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So it certainly is an exciting time for us in District 58. As of tonight, our certified positions are fully staffed for the start of the school year. So that is extremely uh, exciting. So I wanna compliment uh, all of our building principals, our directors, Justin Sissel, in making that happen. Approximately 15% of our instructional assistant positions remain unfilled at this time. So that is our focus, uh, really trying to make sure that we identify um, instructional assistants. Uh, we're having some luck, but we still have some positions that we're trying to fill. Uh, we're continuing to employ new and trusted advertising methods, including social media, school newsletters, educational job seeking websites and our administrators own networks to make that happen. We're confident that we can fill the majority of them, but I, I do want to alert the public and the board that that will be an ongoing need as we go through with the labor shortages. Um, things are looking better than last summer and two summers ago, but we're still not quite out of the woods with our labor shortages. Uh, that being said, we are in a much better position, not only with the positions that we hire here within the district, but also um, our busing company is another great example of how we're filling those positions and uh, being able to better serve our students. So um, we don't have all the positions filled yet with our instructional assistants, but we're getting there and as Justin's chair, we've got about 15% uh, more to go. In terms of curriculum instruction, uh, Liz Earhart and our team uh, led our new teachers today. It began, we had over 30 new staff members uh, to District 58 for certified positions, so it was fun. Uh, this week, the new teachers are being introduced to district resources and learning all about the culture and goals of the district. Uh, the week will be filled with learning opportunities as well as time to meet with district staff and their mentors. Uh, as an example of that, we're also bridging out into the community tomorrow and we will combine with District 99 and uh, the Lions Club will host our annual luncheon. So that'll be a fun time to get together. We get together with all the village officials, so we're certainly uh, looking forward to that. The vast ma uh, majority of materials have been delivered to the schools. Uh, our, our warehouse staff is really working hard as teachers are getting uh, their classrooms ready for instruction. As always, there's a few back-ordered items, but our curriculum department is on top of that, and uh, we expect to have everything ready to go by the first day of school. Uh, so, Liz, I want to congratulate you on that, coming in our new job on, on July 1st. That can be challenging, but I know you've worked very hard on that, and we appreciate it. In terms of financial uh, items, really the biggest thing is that the tentative budget uh, for this fiscal year has been posted. It has to be posted on the website and in the newspaper 30 days prior to when it gets voted on at the September meeting. Since there, were, or there wouldn't be 30 days between this meeting and the September meeting, Todd and his staff uh, made sure that that got 
posted and uh, so that is out there for people to review. As always, I want to remind people the tentative budget is a draft. It's not what the final budget looks like. It's uh, We put that out there and then we start to uh, look at that, examine that, meet with our administrative team and make sure that, that uh, by the time we get to September we'll be in line with our fund balance policy as well as saving money for additional capital needs as directed by our FAC. In terms of technology, our tech department is completing its final preparations for the upcoming school year. Summer projects are complete, including student device setup and the installation of our new wireless access point. So Rod and Todd, we're all throughout the district hanging all of our new wireless access points, which is no small job, so we're really happy with that. And congratulations to your team, Jane, or James, excuse me. Um, we also uh, put out student schedules today, and they are all out. Power school did not go down, so we're very happy. James can take a deep breath, finally, uh, <laughs> that they are out. Uh, but he was running around all day today just to make sure, so uh, we're really happy, and we want to thank him uh, for his effort. And then, of course, special services. Extended school year for eligible students with special needs is wrapped up, and staff is busy preparing for the upcoming school year. In a review of our extended school year, we are pleased to share that almost 100% of our students met their target uh, of their goals, and so that was really uh, exciting. 98% uh, of them maintained or made progress on their identified skills. So, you know, special thanks to Jessica and uh, Jacqueline and Lauren, who were preschool core, excuse me, our extended so school year coordinators, they did a great job, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, facilities. Um, one of the things that we have going on this summer, or actually several of the things, are we have multiple sites with multiple different projects. And unlike the referendum where we have our owner's representative, we have a construction management firm, and we have our architectural firm, really these smaller projects are just a combination of working with our architect and then the staff on hand. So I really want to thank Kevin Bardo and Jeff Neustadt for all of their work uh, getting the buildings ready, but also managing all of these different construction projects. But I will tell you, um, it does get challenging when you're working across 13 or 14 sites. And so uh, we are very thankful to have our, our big team for the referendum uh, so we can focus on our, our regular day-to-day -day jobs. Uh, but here is a, just a bunch of construction updates. Of course, we will put this out in writing so our uh, families can also uh, read it throughout the week. The contractor has finished the majority of uh, masonry work at El Sierra and Henry Puffer. They have a few minor cleanup items remaining, but it, it basically is done. And they will also be done at Highland this Friday. So all that brickwork over the last two years is finally coming to a completion. For the Henry Puffer School Maintenance Project Grant for abatement, flooring, and casework project, all those items have been uh, finished. So Puffer is ready to go. Both fire alarm systems at Highland and Henry Puffer are installed, tested, and ready for occupants. If you remember, last year that was the one that ran over, so we had to kind of piece that together for the year. Those are now all uh, completed. Uh, Lester's Playground is complete and ready to use. White and Company visited the site, and a final punch list of items uh, that need to be adjusted will be taken care of prior to the start of the school year. Pierce Downer's playground still needs the pour in place rubber surface and is scheduled to have that done this Wednesday. So once that gets done, we'll be at the punch list as well. The Puffer Preschool playground in the North Play area are making really great progress. Uh, we want to thank the contractor for completing all the demo work beforehand. So once that equipment got in, they're ready to go in August. So we're anticipating those will also be done. The Indian Trail uh, Playground still needs a little bit of asphalt inside, but that should be ready to go by Monday the 21st, so that will serve both the Indian Trail students and our uh, pre-K students, so that's ready to go. The Kingsley Playground equipment is installed and is in the gravel, and so is the gravel base. We still need the rubber and the mulch uh, surfacing and the asphalt to come in. Uh, the contractor says that should be ready over the weekend, so by next Monday, uh, that should also be ready to go. We have two projects that are still uh, outstanding. One is further along than the other. Those are the playgrounds at Bel Air and Fairmount. And um, Bel Air should be very close to the start of the school year. Fairmount will likely run over something we've been discussing all summer long. There are a variety of reasons for that, mainly with Fairmount. The equipment was the last to get in because of supply chain issues and everything else that's going on. And so because of that, everything would have had to go perfect with all the other projects so that when that equipment came in and it is in that they could have uh, finished by the start of the school year um, it is certainly unfortunate whenever a project runs over i want to assure everyone in the community of, of several things first and foremost uh, that we take this very seriously we know how important playgrounds are and that we will do everything we can to get this done the right way as quickly as possible we also want to apologize whenever something goes over 
Um, you know, there are always reasons, but still, you know, kids are expecting that playground on the first day of school, and when we can't hit that, it's not a good feeling for any of us, and in particular to our families, who donated so much money to make these things a reality. Um, certainly, it, it is keeping us up at night, and we want to make sure that we get that done as, as, as soon as possible. And so we will be meeting with the playground uh, company tomorrow morning over at Fairmount uh, to get the latest update. And we will send a communication out not only to Fairmount, but also to Bel Air uh, to make sure that those uh, individuals living in that community or those communities know exactly what is going on and uh, what the latest update is. Um, it was unfortunate it rained so much today. Every day we can get so much done if we have that perfect weather. Um, July, we had kind of an iffy July as well. So that, that is causing us to be backed up a little bit. And when we get the amount of rain like we got today, that means all the water's gotta be pumped out. It just does delay it a little bit further, but we are on it. Um, I know Kevin uh, Bardo is on it and Jeff Newstadt, and we'll continue to work through that uh, to make sure that those get done um, on time. For public relations, uh, the foundation has had a very, very busy month. Uh, they're planning new teacher luncheon, that's Wednesday. So our foundation, um, it's a really neat thing, what our foundation does is they throw a luncheon for all of our new teachers, but they also bring in all the different government agencies in the village of Downers Grove. So the police department will be there, the fire department will be there, the park district will be there, and they'll all share all the great things that they do for the students of District 58. And so it's always a fun luncheon and we're looking forward to that. Uh, so we're going to remind everybody it's that time of year it's hard to believe but Oktoberfest is just around the corner so please save the dates it's Friday September 15th and Saturday September 16th it's always a great time here in downtown Downers Grove and like always we need some uh, help and volunteers so that uh, volunteer website is up and running if you have time on the 15th or 16th uh, please try and volunteer for that uh, it's a really great community event and of course all the money the foundation raises comes back to the staff and students of District 58. Uh, two of our biggest publications, the annual report, um, that is set to go out to all residents the week of August 22nd, so we're excited about that. That's the one newsletter that we do every year that goes out to every taxpayer in District 58, and uh, it's, it's, it's our chance to share with the community all of the great things that are taking place in our school system or some of the challenges that we face, and so I want to especially thank uh, Faith Bear for all of her work on that. Um, Faith has jumped right in and has done just a great job with that, getting it ready to go. So we're excited about that. And then of course our student handbook. Um, the board is well aware of all of the uh, legal changes that have come up uh, with the latest round uh, at the legislature in Springfield. So there's just a lot of things that have to go into that handbook to make sure that the school district is following along, that our families are aware of uh, some of these changes. Um, and there are significant changes. Um, the bullying uh, legislation is a great example of that. Schools are now required uh, to notify any family uh, that their child is involved in a bullying situation, whether they are the victim or the alleged uh, student that uh, did the bullying. We have to notify them within 24 hours. Um, we have to make a reasonable attempt. Uh, this is an, a, a strain on our administrators from time to time because if that comes in on a Saturday, they still are bound by that law. And, and so I wanna make sure that uh, everyone is aware of that and that we will do our very best uh, to make sure that we're uh, adhering to that new piece of legislation. Um, to just conclude my report, um, it's always an exciting time as we start the new school year. It's hard to believe we're the 23-24 school year. I have to say that a couple times because it just sounds crazy that it's almost 2024, but um, really, really excited. Uh, there's a lot of nice things going on in the district with the referendum just a lot of energy and our new teachers this morning uh, were fantastic and we just can't wait to get started. Uh, we will be at the Tivoli to kick off opening day on Monday and all of our staff members will be there. Uh, and it's very rare that we're able to bring the entire district together. So we're certainly looking forward to seeing the entire staff of District 58. I know our board president will be there as always to uh, welcome our staff back. So we're looking forward to it. And of course, any board member is also uh, welcome to attend if their schedule uh, permits itself. And that will be Monday at eight o'clock at the Tivoli. That concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay. That brings us to the monthly business and treasurer's report. Well, I'll be brief. Uh, Kevin said that as you know, the, <clears throat> the display budget is out and posted on the website. Uh, we have a 30-day window. Uh, we published the notification for the budget hearing, which will be at the opening of the September board meeting, where um, we will have the budget um, for the board for approval. We have some things to continue, you know, the, 
this is uh, a continual process. Obviously, the budget is um, works under the, the five-year plan that the board approved back in May, uh, April or May, I don't remember which one. Um, and, you know, we'll continue to work towards make, making sure we meet all the policy structures and so forth. Um, we still are getting more information. We did receive this last week um, uh, what we were going to be getting in the evidence-based funding, uh, corporate personal property. Uh, we just filed our transportation claim. So we have an idea what, you know, those revenues are going to be and, and making those adjustments to the budget. So uh, you have in your packet, uh, albeit a month late, the June 30th uh, year-to-date report uh, that we did at year-end. Um, you do not have one for July because we do not do one for July as it's only been one month into the year. We don't have a budget. We set it against um, and uh, it really doesn't have a whole lot because we haven't paid but more than a few 12-month people in that. So it's, it's kind of a uh, non-report. Uh, you will have one starting next month, though, for the budget with posted with uh, based against the budget that we are will seek approval by the board. Uh, and that will start again the, the cycle for uh, the next year. Um, other than that, I think Dr. Russell covered the other things that were uh, in transportation. I'm looking at Bardo to see was there anything else I needed to hit. The recommendations for action. And there are several recommendations for action uh, for the board this evening. Um, through for the construction and referendum work uh, as we continue to work on those capital things. The commissioning one is one uh, where this is the firm that goes through and ensures that the HVAC systems and all the systems uh, meet all of the uh, requirements and manufacturing so that we have all the warranties intact and, and so forth. And it's going to do what we, um, what it says it's going to do. Uh, bringing them in at this point helps with that paper review uh, and just have another set of eyes and looking at it from a different lens uh, so that um, we have that, you know, moving forward as we continually work on what is going to be somewhat of a complicated structure and all of the mechanicals and so forth that will be happening uh, anytime when you add systems like that to pre-existing buildings. Uh, it's important to, to have that so that everything works accordingly as expected. And just the only other thing on transportation uh, for the school board, uh, every August we ask the board to approve the serious safety hazard Thank routes. You. Those routes have not changed uh, since last year. The same conditions are met, so there aren't any new ones. I know, I think in my first year we, we added one on Fairview Avenue, uh, but we've pretty much covered every street in Downers Grove now, and so there are no mm -hmm. new additional uh, routes. In all three schools, we are the last of the three in the contract with First Student to open. Um, we had a meeting with uh, the driver's uh, barbecue uh, last week with all three uh, representatives from all three schools. Um, three districts. Much, pardon. Districts. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Woodridge. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Woodridge School District, District 99 and us uh, all contract together with First Student. And uh, we were there for their uh, driver cookout on Friday. Um, they are extraordinarily better staffed. I think they have two subs right now for all of their routes, uh, which is probably 18 less than what they had to start last year. Um, and so we're in a much better position uh, from, a, from that standpoint. Uh, opening up, also having all three schools start different times will hopefully uh, you know, make it a much smoother transition when we start up. So I think having it fully staffed and, and, you know, for anyone listening out there in the community, we will stay later at the district office uh, during those first couple of weeks just to make sure that all the routes get run and that the kids get dropped off at the right spots. And then after Labor Day, we will look at our usage and the, the ridership on each route and see if we need to add more or if we need to consolidate, but that won't happen until after we run the routes for a, for a couple of weeks. But uh, I do agree with Todd, we are in much better shape than we have been uh, over the last couple of years in terms of first student being able to staff uh, the routes. I also think one of the things that will be a little different this year um, from last year was last year the high school switched to their block schedule, which made things a lot more complicated. Now the first student has a year under their belt. I think that will certainly help because a lot of our routes are paired with the high schools. Not all of them, but some of them are. And so we're hoping for a little bit more 
um, smoothness to the whole system uh, this year. So if you know anyone looking to drive a bus, I'm sure they are taking applications. It yes, does they take. Are. <laughs> it does take. <laughs> it takes eight weeks from the time you apply. Uh, to the time that you know to go through the certification and testing and and uh, training mm -hmm. before uh, you can get behind a wheel of a bus so it, there is a long lead time once once they uh, start people in that process so thank you all right thanks thank you very much all right, that brings us to our committee reports but being on the summer schedule it's gonna be pretty light the policy committee has not met nor has the Legislative Committee, or the Financial Advisory Committee, or the District Leadership Team, uh, the help, nor has the Health and Wellness Committee. So that brings us to SASSET. Yeah, just a real quick update on SASSET. SASSET is back. They had their opening day last week. It was hosted at Downers Grove North High School, so they were nice and close to us. The two interim uh, superintendents were there. Um, and, you know, the vibe coming out of that uh, opening day was it felt like the reset button was hit on SAS that people are feeling really good and excited to go in a uh, new positive direction, which is certainly something that we are trying to foster. The next governing board meeting will be um, August 16th, which is this week, and we'll have more updates uh, after that meeting. But things are moving in the right direction, and uh, the two interim superintendents, in my view, are doing everything they should and, and doing a really nice job to, to build that staff morale back up and get things moving in the right uh, direction. So we're excited about that. So we have two because they're both retirees and they can't work a full year. How are they splitting their time? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so there, there has to be two because the, you know, the admin calendar is 260 days a year. Each one of them is bound by 120 days, and so they get to about 240. But then a new person will come in, and so uh, they'll they'll be able to bridge that gap. Uh, what what is typically done, and what I believe is happening in this case, and I can verify this, but this was what they originally said is. Um, one individual will work two days a week and then the other one will work three and then that alternates so they can keep the um, you know days consistent between them but also make sure one doesn't go over uh, before the other one and then of course there are going to be some things where one will be handling something and that would be a case where maybe that's their three day a week week or they might switch if they have you know an important IEP meeting or a training or something like that. So then the expectation would be that optimally that the the new executive director would be in place by approximately June first. Yeah, so we always want to try and bring that person in um, closer to the start. Another thing that sometimes happens, and we'll know more just depending on the candidate that we select. Sometimes instead of doing um, two and three. Sometimes it will be two and two, and then there'll be a day where you won't have them on site. Mm -hmm. That way they can spread it all the way right. to uh, July 1st. But certainly at the start of the year, for the first half of the year, you're gonna see that two and three model, and then depending on who they hire, um, a lot of times what, what happens is it can be an internal candidate that rises up through the organization, and so you can keep that two or three day a week model. Other times you wanna spread that out to make sure uh, that that person um, is able to stay all the way through June 30th, they're those people. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. All right, we have no discussion items tonight, so that brings us to public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to share public comment with the board, but it is not intended to be a time for members of the public to enter into a dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public comment may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff when appropriate. The board is allocated 30 minutes tonight for public comment. We ask that you keep your comments to a three minute limit to allow everyone the opportunity to speak. At this time, have we received any cards? No. All right, so uh, normally we just move on, but we do have a couple people here today, so I just wanna verify, is there anyone who would like to come up and speak uh, tonight? All right. That brings us to the approval of minutes. Are there any suggested revisions to the minutes as presented in the packet of materials? All right, if not, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the July 10th, 2023 regular meeting as presented? So moved. Second. All right, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carried to approve the minutes of the July 10th, 2023 regular meeting as presented. Uh, next up is the consent agenda. Are there any items a board member would like to have considered separately? All right, if not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the personnel report and financial statements consisting of the list of bills? So moved. Second. All right, Melissa, would please call roll. Member Harris. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. The consent agenda has been approved as presented in the packet of materials. 
We have some recommendations for action. First up is the foundational reading training, letters, language, essentials for teachers and reading spelling. Reading and spelling. Is there a motion to approve the letters training for identified staff at a cost of $37,960? So moved. Second. All right, is there any discussion? Just kudos on the acronym on this one, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Liz didn't create it, but I did go over with it just to make sure I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Melissa, will you please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the letters training program uh, for identified staff at a total cost of $37,960. Next up is a memorandum of understanding with the DGESP concerning hard to fill positions. Is there a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding for the concer concerning the hard to fill positions as presented? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? Melissa, please call roll. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the memorandum of understanding concerning the hard to fill positions as presented. Uh, next up is the reimbursable paid lunch cost. Is there a motion to approve the meal pricing as presented in the attached memo? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the meal pricing as presented in the attached memo. Uh, we have our serious safety hazard designations for 2023 through 2024. Is there a motion to designate the areas in the attached memo as hazardous walk areas and approve the provisions of fee-based transportation services for students who reside in these areas? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Just, yeah, it's the same as last year. So Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to designate the areas in the attached memo as hazardous walk areas and approve the provision of fee-based transportation services for students who reside in those areas. Uh, next up, we have a construction consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the construction consent agenda consisting of the items as presented in the p packet of materials? Does anybody want to? Yeah, it's not, but is there anything that anyone would like to have considered separately? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in that case, is there a motion to approve the construction consent agenda consisting of items as presented in the packet of materials? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Melissa, will you please go roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. Uh, the consent agenda has been approved as presented in the packet of materials. A couple of announcements. Uh, next Friday, or Friday, September 8th at 7 a.m. will be the next financial advisory committee meeting. And then Monday, September 11th at 7 p.m. will be the next regular board meeting. That'll be right here at Downers Grove Village Hall. And if I didn't say it, the financial advisory uh, meeting will be at O'Neill Middle School. Uh, there are no other committee meetings? No. no. All right. We have no reason to go into closed session tonight unless there's anyone who would like to discuss the closed meeting minutes from July 10th. Are we sure? Okay. <laughs> All right. I think that not for discussing the minutes, but I do believe we have a DLT meeting on the 11th. On September 11th, I think that you are correct. So, so would that be at 345? 345, 345, September 11th at uh, O'Neill Middle School. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kira. Yeah. All right, then is there a motion to approve the July 10th, 2023 closed meeting minutes and keep them permanently closed due to the confidential nature of their contents? So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And, um, any against? All right, the motion carried to approve the minutes from the July 10th, 2023 closed meeting and keep them permanently closed due to the confidential nature of their contents. Is there a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. Second. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the meeting is now adjourned at 7.44 p.m. Ooh. I wasn't sure.